PMC did a huge European Union survey on monarchism and other relevant topics. Today we are going to look into how European citizens evaluate and see Europe's legislative powers, monarchism and the idea of a federal European Union that is being pushed by some MEPs. This video will explore historical contexts, current sentiments and future possibilities. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated with future videos. So let's start with the European Union. It is often said that the European Union, for which Otto von Habsburg fought for decades, is the heir to the Austro-Hungarian or even Holy Roman Empire. To a certain extent, this is true. Many countries live together under one rule to pursue certain common goals and interests. The journey of the European Union begins in the aftermath of the World War II, where devastation and the desire for lasting peace led visionary leaders to seek deeper cooperation amongst European nations. The first step was to create European Coal and Steel Community in 1951, aimed at integrating economic sectors critical for war-making capabilities, namely coal and steel between France, West Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. This initiative was pivotal as it turned historic rivals into cooperative partners in key economic areas. The success of the European Coal and Steel Community paved the way for the Rome Treaty in 1957, which established the European Economic Community. This common market sought to create a customs union among six nations, removing trade barriers and fostering economic unity. Over the years, the community expanded to include Denmark, Ireland and the United Kingdom in 1973, Greece in 1981 and Spain and Portugal in 1986. The transformation from an economic community to a more integrated political entity began with the Single European Act in 1986, leading to the creation of the Single Market in 1993. The pivotal moment came with the Maastricht Treaty in 1992, which formally established the European Union as we know it today and introduced the European citizenship, enhancing the sense of the European identity. Today, the European Union encompasses a vast area of policy, from climate, environment and health, to external relations and security, justice and migration. The Eurozone, Schengen area and various policies and directives are testaments to the depth and breadth of European integration. TMC asked citizens of the European Union, do you believe that the European Union should have more or less legislative power compared to the national governments? The answer was clear, no. Only 24% wanted more power to the European Union, while majority were opting for remaining the same. Greatest support was in republics, Latvia with 46%, Romania 40% and Italy 36%. And the greatest opposition to European Union having more legislative power was in monarchies, Netherlands, with 75% opposition, Luxembourg 73% and Belgium 69%. Overall support for the European Union having more powers lies with republics, averaging 28% support for more power and 49% wanting less power with European Union. Monarchies, on the other hand, were 17% for and 64% against. Does this mean that monarchies work better for their citizens, so the citizens don't need to seek outside help? Next topic, let's talk briefly about the monarchies in Europe. 
Monarchies have been pivotal in shaping Europe's history, culture and policies from ancient times through the medieval period and into the modern era. However, the two world wars of the 20th century dramatically reshaped Europe's political landscape, leading many monarchies to be replaced by republics, as seen in Germany, Italy, Hungary, Bulgaria, Romania, Greece, Austria and more. Today, remaining European monarchies, like those of Sweden, Spain and Netherlands, generally serve ceremonial roles, with sovereign acting as a symbol of historical continuity and national unity, while political power rests with elected bodies. The question we asked European citizens was, what is your current view on constitutional monarchy as a system of government? 36.6% had positive view versus 52.9% having negative. Now let's look at this from a generational point of view. 33% of Europeans aged 45 and above see monarchy in positive way, while 56% see it in a negative. Opposite to them are younger generations, ages 44 and below, that see monarchy in positive way with 42.4% and negative 46.9%, which is significant increase generation on generation. And remember, this is all without any campaign for monarchy, not a single positive word for monarchy. While we can often hear negative propaganda from pro-republican politicians in Europe and many other places around the world, Not surprisingly, majority of TMC viewers fall into this younger group. Did you know that you too can support our work by subscribing to our Patreon or YouTube memberships? Link is in the description down below. And now, finally, let's take a look at the idea of the Federal European Union. Before we continue, I want to discuss a very important word, subsidiarity. Simply put, Subsidiarity is the principle that states that all issues should be addressed by the lowest institutional level that is competent to resolve them, and that higher levels of organization should never take over function that can be handled better and in more competent way by lower levels. Example of country that did not have subsidiarity principle is the Soviet Union, Their top politicians were deciding everything in the country, everything from policies to what types of screws should be used in production of cars or tractors. Although the principle of subsidiarity is a part of Article 5 of the Treaty of the European Union, the current EU has a tendency to disregard subsidiarity in too many cases. The concept of a federal European Union is one where the European Union would evolve beyond its current states as a supranational union of sovereign states into a single federal state with a centralized government. This debate is central to the future of European Union, so we ask the question. Some members of the European Parliament are advocating for a federal Europe where more powers are centralized at the EU level, while others support a union of sovereign states with more powers retained by individual countries. Which model do you support? Europeans have clearly said with overwhelming majority that they are not interested in the federal Europe. Romania with 49%, Spain with 40% and Latvia with 39% are leading nations that are pro-federal European Union. Opposite to them are Sweden, where only 9% want federal Europe, Ireland 10% and Netherlands with 11%. One more thing that I noticed. We will soon have the elections in the European Union. There are many political blocs in the Parliament. But with 30% support, why is there no monarchist bloc? 30 years ago, when the older generation age group was a young one, 
the monarchy might not have been so popular concept for politicians to use it. But now, maybe they should rethink this. What do you think? Should European Parliament have a monarchist block? Let me know down in comments. And special thanks to our Patreon and YouTube member supporters. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.